Sunday. We'll have to swim, bike, and run day. <laughs> it's breakfast with Bob and Brother Jim. Yeah, Hello, Jim. We're Hello, everybody. Championship edition presented by ES Sports Nutrition, Cliff Bar, Timex, Roca, Tanya Pura Resort, Rudy Project, Slow Twitch, Jeff Simons. Congratulations, you really did race ugly yesterday. Oh, thanks. That was mission accomplished then. So, uh, I love that. Yeah, that's awesome. So <laughs> for, cool. for a guy who comes in, coming in as a rookie, you want to have this great race, yeah. take the turnaround around Javi, and then something's going on with your bike. Talk about that. Yeah, it's, uh, you're coming down those sections where it's steep, it's windy, and um, I just noticed that the bolt on my crank was starting to uh, just come a little bit loose yeah. and that's fine as long as it's not the, the left crank itself that's coming loose right. and so I uh, tried to put it out of my head but um, it became kind of clear that the crank had shifted out and was uh, just starting to uh, to basically to wobble a bit okay and so at, at that point when you when you first started feeling this do you have any idea what the place you were in um I don't know I was uh I wasn't up there at the front group, but uh, but I was uh, in a good position yeah. where I felt good. I was going to ride strong on the last half and, uh, and just really smoke that run. So. so as this is happening, and obviously this is the most important race on the planet, <laughs> what's going through your head? Uh, it was just, you're just kind of questioning whether, um, you know, all the hard work you've done and, and the hard work you're continuing to do is going to mean something. Right. And uh, you're just thinking if this crank falls off, then it's, you know, it's almost... For all for nothing sure and so and so i'm just trying to think about okay well just put it out of your mind and and just tell myself you know i'm just going to ride this thing until it breaks and hopefully that's going to be enough to get me to the finish line sure and if i see some uh tech support along the way then i'm going to uh wave them down and hopefully right. get this fixed but um but yeah just really trying to stay positive and focus on what i can do well and one of the problems as a pro it's expensive to come to hawaii and if you don't finish top 10, there's no prize money and usually no bonuses to go with that. So uh, we see a lot of pros get to the point where they go, okay, I'm having a bad day. Florida's coming up. Arizona's coming up. I got to start trying to qualify for next year and start getting some points. Any of that stuff going through your head when you realize that this isn't getting any better? Uh, no, it's uh, logically that might make sense. But, um, but I think for me, you know, the prize money and everything, it's just... It's just a way to enable you to have moments like this. And right. To get out in world championships and, and get out on a legendary course like this and just uh, just see what you're made of. And what, what really went through my mind, especially when um, the crank ended up, uh, I guess it slipped. And yes. so that it was a point where both crank arms were in the same position. And I was kind of riding like this. Oh, my God. You're like on a hand and, cycle. <laughs> yeah. I was like, and so that, that's not a very good way to ride. I even tried to do it, but you can't do it. Right. And, um, and so and I'm getting off the bike. And, well, first thing that went through my mind was just a lot of yes. explicits. Yes. And, uh, and that kind of went through the air as well. But, um, but, no, it was just you're thinking about how many people are out there. There's like 2,000 people out that are out there that, have, uh, that are work, working jobs. You know, they've put just as much to come in here, and, they, and it means as much to them. And I'm thinking... You know, just because I've got only one leg for a while, that doesn't mean, uh, that, that's not a very good excuse not to finish. I mean, I, I was thinking there's guys out there that have done this race with one leg or a right. guy that we know, hand Andre cycle. Kylik, has done it on a hand cycle. He's done right. the whole Ultraman on a hand cycle. Yes. So, um, you know, just having your crank broke is, was a pretty poor excuse not to finish. So there was a point where we were with the lead women in the, in the Timex tr uh, vehicle and we came up, you're riding with one leg. <laughs> right, yeah. How long were you, uh, about 30K, or how long were you ride, 5 miles, 20 uh, miles, 20 miles? Yeah, I think it got a bit embellished, but it was uh, it was at least 5 miles. Um, with one leg? With one leg, and, and it was a hard, it was a point where it was a headwind, and it was hilly, and uh, it's really hard. Like, I know indoors, you pedal like 45 seconds with one leg, and you're just, your legs are screaming. Work. Yeah, and so I'm trying to do this up these hills, and, and I uh, there was one part where I just couldn't do it. Like, it was a big hill, and I had to, like, get off my bike and try and walk it. And walk bike it. cleats. Yeah, but, well, no, I tried to do bare feet and run up it, but then my feet were just burning, so I was like, okay, I better uh, better put the shoes back on and do the shuffle. So, But it was just, just for me, it was just getting to that, trying to get to that uh, finish line no matter what. And even if I had to 
um, you know, pedal one leg for the next 10 miles, whatever right. it was. Um, you know, I was going to do it. So. And then tech support finally got you, and you, you had to get off the bike, and they tightened things up a little bit. Yeah, we tightened it up and, uh, and kind of pushed me on my way, and uh, I was pretty disheartened at that point. But, uh, you know, it was never a question in my mind whether or not I was going to finish, so I just, just kept riding and uh, so did my you, best you to come finish. in, and obviously not in the position you want to be in, <laughs> and I'm sure early on in the run you're, you know, sort of not so much thinking about dropping out, but just hard to be motivated to run fast. So, yeah. but, but you had end up having, I think, the third fastest marathon of the day for the men. You ran 250.15. When did it click in that, hey, you know what? Bike didn't go away I wanted to, but I could still have a great run. Well, it definitely wasn't the first couple of miles. I was, uh, I spent a lot of time uh, walking and soul searching. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just wondering, um, you know, just how hard do I want to hurt? And it wasn't, you know, do I want to save myself or, yeah. or whatever? It was, it was all just about like, uh, my heart just felt empty. And it just, it takes a lot of passion to, to really push yourself, especially on a hot day. Yeah. And it was like, it, I just couldn't seem to find that. And, um, you know, and then, but you start getting going out there and, you know, on the far stretches of Alihi and, um, I don't know the guys that were guys that are my entourage that are here watching. They, yeah, uh, the posse. Yeah, the posse was kind of out there on bikes, and they were uh, they were yelling at stuff just to go. And when I hit that turnaround, um, I just started rolling. There was a guy ahead of me, and and I thought, okay, maybe I'll catch him and then gain some momentum. And one of these guys uh, yelled out, "Goonies never say die." And we'd been joking about that because Sean Aston was yes. in the race. And yes. it kind of like just like just spurred it on in me that it's Goonies like, never say die. Goonies never say die. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go with it and see where it goes. And uh, yeah, just pushed hard from there. Uh, as you're going along, uh, your, your motto is getting ugly. And you are a former steeplechaser, the toughest, the toughest track and field athletes there are. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you're drawing on all that, thinking, okay, I'm in this epic place. I'm just going to you know, run one mile at a time and, and just get there. Yeah, it's just one mile at a time, just uh, focus on, hey, maybe I'll be able to catch somebody up front. But it was more just about, like, um, you know, just prove that I stand for something more than um, just, you know, making money or having a high finish. Right. And it was, you know, just that I'm someone that's just kind of wired to push hard and, and to dig deep no matter what the situation is. And just, uh, you know, whatever, whatever I have in me, I'm going to give it. And if there's... You know, highs and lows in the race, I'm going to overcome that and uh, just get ugly, as I like to say. What was the feeling coming down to Lee Drive, knowing what you've overcome, right? You overcame a lot to just to get there. Uh, I couldn't actually tell you. Somebody's, I, that's what I said before. I don't know what it's going to feel like to finish down to Lee And I saw Mike Twelziak, and he was just up the road as we were, um, I guess, turning down to get onto a Lee yep. and I was, and I've caught him like late in races and he's, and I've not caught him late in races. We've had this kind of back and forth battle and, uh, and I was like, Oh, I think I can catch him. So I just booked it and I just sprinted as hard as I could. And, uh, so I was just kind of in a world of hurt and didn't even see did you get him? Anything. I didn't. I was about four seconds short. So. Oh. But I could see I was coming in, and they had, like, someone had, like, a German flag up for him. And I was like, oh, you better take that thing down and put a Canadian flag. But, <laughs> but he got me. He got me. So I got him about a month ago and challenged Penticton, and he said, oh, I'm going to finish ahead of you in Kona. So now it's my turn to beat him next time. <laughs> Love it. What do you take away from this that you can use for next year? Uh, a lot of just, just the learning, just knowing the conditions. Um, I've definitely taken away the fact that I swam in the front pack. Yeah. I'm um, going to take away that I kind of got whooped on the bike a little bit, and so I've got some stuff to work on. So even before the, the crank, you, you felt like you, you, you could ride better? Uh, definitely. Like if, to put myself in a position to uh, really contend for this race, yeah. that's a weakness that I'll need to work on. Um, and then just that I, you know, that I can throw down a good run and right. just that I can do it here. And, and that was one of the things when I'm running, I thought, um, I want to know what the energy lab feels like, you know, yeah, I want to know sure. what it feels like when you're running hard, what that climb out of there feels like, or, uh, just pushing it. So, you know, luckily I can take that with me and, um, yeah. And hopefully maybe just knowing that there's some toughness inside of me that maybe I didn't know a little bit. A little bit of toughness. So what's a little bit of off season? Do you have any idea what your plans are for next year? Uh, all coming back here next year. That's the plan. So Okay, so you get, um, get some points and get back here. Yeah, we'll, we'll map out a route and figure out how to come back here better prepared and, uh, 
I'm just ready to go. Love it. Jeff, thanks so much for taking time. Thanks, Bob. I Con appreciate congratulations. it. Congratulations. Uh, I love it when guys overcome. That's what this race is all about. Like you said, Andre Kylek was a you know double amputee and what he does, it's hard to look at a crank problem as, as an issue. Yeah, no, it's just, just a little hiccup out there. So Love that. Jeff Simons has been our guest again. We are presented by EA Sports Nutrition, Cliff Bar, Timex, Roca, Tanya Pura Resort, Rudy Project, Slow Twitch, Poncho Man, Championship Edition, take us out. Sunday, don't swim, bike and run day. Breakfast with Bob. Yeah! Awesome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks for starting us off. I appreciate ne it. Next year we'll be back here. When